Hello everyone. We're going to be taking an introductory look at polynomial functions. Now I've written the expression that is, or the equation that is used to determine polynomial functions. It is really large and intimidating, but I am sure that you are aware of polynomials. So what I think is often overlooked is the power of a table of values. So if we start off with an arbitrary or any function whatsoever, as long as you have the equation, you can determine points. So just bear with me. Imagine that I have some unknown function. I can calculate the points by simply plugging in the x values to determine the y. So wouldn't it be interesting if 0, 0 was a point negative 1, negative 1 is a point, and now you might be thinking, is it a line? Certainly looks that way. And then we have this third point over there. Now you don't know what the function is, but any function that you have the equation of, simply take the x value, plug it in. Really super powerful. Whoa, this is turning into a strange function indeed. And um, I'm going to calculate the fifth point. The fifth point looks like this. So you may be asking yourself, what possible function can fit that? Now, I know that you don't know that, what this looks like quite yet. But I think it's interesting to note that from a table of values, we have a good idea. You can actually make an educated guess. And if you want, you could calculate far more um, points on a graph and get the graph. So that is a common theme that we'll be doing uh, a lot. This uh, unit is we have to know the behavior of the graph. Once we know the behaviors of a certain family of graphs, we're able to make really, really accurate uh, estimations of what the graph looks like. Anyways, if you're curious, this is my graph. Maybe you haven't seen a function that looked like that, but this is a polynomial. So I'm just going to get rid of my graph, get rid of my points here, and we're going to start from... Uh, so polynomials. We're going to be discussing these key ideas. So factors that determine the shape of the graph are the degree of the function, the highest exponent. This will determine the left-hand and right-hand side behavior. You don't need to take this down quite yet. We'll be going over this quite extensively. But the degree of the function also determines the turning points. You may be asking, what is a turning point? Well, perhaps it's the vertices. The leading coefficient determines the left-hand and right-hand side behavior. Now, I'm not going to say that it's the overall slope on the graph. I guess that's what people would say, uh, students would say. But it's more than that. It's the leading coefficient determines the left-hand and right-hand side behavior. That is, as you approach from the left to the right, is this graph going down, as this one, or is it going up? As you, the graph exits on the right, is the graph pointing down or pointing up? The, so um, the left-hand side behavior is determined by the leading coefficient. As well, the leading coefficient simply is the number in front of the largest exponent. Another thing that we're going to be taking a look at, really important, is the zeros. And we call this the multiplicity and location of zeros. So for a given zero, where is it? Because different graphs have different behaviors, right? So the zeros tell us where this is. The mul multiplicity is just a fancy word by saying what is the exponent above the factor. We will see this. But different mul multiplicities have different behaviors. So this is just a brief overview of what is a polynomial function. So I'm going to start off with the simplest family of polynomial functions. There it is. Horizontal line. And then what other polynomial function have you become familiar with? 
y is equal to mx plus b. So y is equal to mx plus b, I'm just going to say it a little bit different. y is equal to a x plus a naught. And then we went further on and we have polynomial functions of degree 2. It ended up being quadratic. Hopefully I'll make another video to explain all these hard terminologies here. So now things are going to get exciting, I'm hoping. So we're going up in increasing level of complexity here. The next, so we have a 0 degree, 1 degree. Quadratic is 2 degree because the exponent is 2. This is a cubic. Okay, my graph's kind of getting complicated, but you probably notice the curves in the graph generally get more as the degree increases. So I'm going to start taking weight graphs now because things are looking pretty complicated. So that is a degree 3 graph. This is a degree 4 graph. That's what a degree 4 graph looks like. Wow, there's many turns to this graph. Next one I am going to be doing is a degree 5 graph. Now this degree 5 graph is kind of a nice graph, um, but it looks absolutely crazy, doesn't it? There is, by picking apart the various pieces of the polynomial function, we will be able to really easily identify the graph shape, the type of zeros, and uh, other attributes as well. So if you're being overwhelmed right now, really I'm just going to break it up for you. What are we going to be doing? We're going to be taking a look at the degree of the function. I'll be explaining that later. We're going to identify the leading coefficient and the type of zeros. And if all else fails, which hopefully it won't, we're just going to get a table of values and graph our graph. Hopefully this made sense. Uh, go to the next video and we can start the lesson. Fool around with Desmos on your, on your cell phone, just typing in various polynomial functions. We'll see you soon.